15, and I would think a little awkward for someone like Sarah to return this serve because the bounce and width is going to be so much more than she's used to. This ball comes from a great height. It creates angle. Let's not forget Team Poland made the finals last year. Went down to Team USA, so they are looking to get one ahead this year. 14 left. Doesn't do a lot of serve volleying in his singles matches, her catch. So that's not it's not foreign to him, but it's certainly not something he he does uh, too often. Come in behind that first serve. Game two Three aces to the first court, untouchable. First game. Perfect start for Team Poland. Not holding back on his serves, her catch. He just rolls the arm over, doesn't he? Just rolls it over. He went well above 200 k's a couple of times in that game, and looks like he's sort of serving in his sleep. Well, despite having a high first serve percentage in his singles match, what Alejandro Davidovich Fakina did so well was return. He just read it so well. So maybe he can give Sara Saribas Tormo some advice for then at that next return game. Davidovich for Kina to serve for Team Spain. Alejandro Davidovich for Kina, Team Spain to serve. If you make it, it's a bonus. But even if you go there and don't in the beginning, it gets the net player's attention. Trying to cement them there on that side of the court. I'm fortunate to have Catherine Whitaker courtside. Good afternoon, Kath. How's it looking down there? Good afternoon, Boyana. It is looking pretty beautiful, actually. It's It's been a perfect afternoon for tennis. I know it was hot when uh, Shontek and Cerebus Tormo were playing singles, but the cloud, or the, rather the shadow, has come over the court now, and it's it's just gorgeous out there. It's a, it's a lovely afternoon for it, and uh, we love it when these ties come down to the mixed doubles, don't we? It's, uh, it's an exciting prospect. Well, pretty obvious what the intent is from Hubert Hercatch, isn't it? Pressure now for Team Spain, already facing a break point. Oh. 
So it will be Davidovich Fakina to serve at her catch. It's deciding point. Uh, return that has such an influence how you play these big points really well it, not just in uh, tiebreakers but on a tennis court in general the more you play the bigger points well the better chance you have and uh, her catch there really did a big thing for his team fact that he's prepared to move Hubert because he, look, he doubles is not his forte I mean he, he, obviously he's good at it but uh, his singles is what he concentrates mainly on and, and but to see him move and intimidate at the net is important I mean can you imagine how small the court would look yeah. if, if if he takes one step and then puts his arm out <laughs> haven't gone the Spanish way so far, have they? And that's the side that Davidovich Fikina relies on, that backhand. See there. I like what Chiantek said on court after winning her singles match. Is she's looking to use the doubles to get a bit of better look at the court in terms of its geometry. Always looking to add another string to her bow. Well, she hit that uh, forehand into a very small space, and uh, at one other point. Team Spain just looking a little bit flat, Fitzy. Yeah. So, three opportunities now for Team Poland to cons consolidate on that early break. that bit of your own medicine big fella <laughs> so important isn't it just to be able to use that down the line early on and keep the person at the net like her catch honest he's looking to move early isn't he yeah and when you consider a man of that size he stands not close to the uh, sideline here of the tram lines he stands right in the middle of the opposition service box so Too good. You've got it. If you're good enough to hit it in the alley, it's okay. But gee, covers a lot of court. So nine minutes played, and it's all in the favour of Team Poland. They are off to a flying start. 3-0.
będzie mógł sobie bezkarnie wchodzić. Szybka piłka i czasami obok niej. Ja szczególnie jak grasz, jak grasz super w pokrosie, no to jak grasz wiesz, piłkę w linię boczną, no to nawet jak on przetnie, no to, to ja, tam, ja tam stoję i gram w pokrosie. Come on now, you've done lots of travel. Oh, well, I had a, an interpreter last night. I, I can't be expected to return the favor. Of course, you knew exactly what the service was saying, didn't you? I did. Not Team Poland, unfortunately. You must feel educated being multilingual, do you? I don't know any other, I suppose. I'm just, yeah, just used to it, but very fortunate to know it. I just... So the Polish team looking relaxed, but they're determined. Well, I'll be swapping from Polish over to English because Craig Boynton is Herbert okay, Hubert, okay, okay. her catcher's coach. He's a man of incredible uh, experience, wealth of experience, and happens to be a pretty good guy, too. I can speak from first-hand knowledge. Oof, just catching the line. Well, this is a good tactic, you know. When you do that, when you hit the ball, if you're good enough to hit it in the alley, you've got a chance of winning the point. But even if you don't win and you hit straight down the line early in games, it it has an effect, I think, mentally on the net player from the opposite uh, opposition. And this, this service motion uh, technically is not perfect. It's effective, but this is this serve is going to be very hittable for both Sviontek and for her catch. So a lot of first serves are, are going to need to be made here. Well, he's quick, isn't he? And that's his role today. He, he, I think for the Spanish to have a chance, well, no, I think he has to be all over the net and, and effective when he when he moves. Definitely, and I think that last point was a perfect perfect example of, of what he is capable of doing, but has to rely on Zaruba's Tormo to set him up. You can see now that looking to do a formation, so they're looking to draw the ball towards Davidic Fikina. sometimes trying to have an influence and then maybe overstepping the mark to stretching too much there her catch the split second decision you have to make just couldn't get enough on this one that could have gone into the chest too by the way <laughs> seen that happen before <laughs> I never did that no I saw my mixed doubles partner, Liz Smiley, do that. You know, she did Liz, that. You know Liz Sayers from your state? Yes. Oh, yeah, she... Ruthless. She, she hit someone once in the chest from about two metres away and he went down and, uh, gee, it was intimidating. <laughs> she was on my team, though. We won the point, but... That's all that counts <laughs> at the end of the day, isn't it? OK, so an opportunity for Team Spain to get themselves on the board here in the first set. Good stuff. Good reflexes. Good hitting from Spiontek. Call that all good. So these are the points, aren't they? They, they win and lose you these sets. The, the sudden death ones. The Poles have already won one of them. That's well, a big difference, isn't it? 3-1 compared to 4-0. Too good. Spiontek there, not putting a foot wrong. And also her catch, drawing the force, Jarrah. 
So let's hear what Kath Whitaker has to say. She's with Craig Boynton. Yeah, certainly on Fitzy, you were mentioning Craig, and I'm lucky enough to steal a couple of moments with Craig just now. Coach of Hubert Hercatch. Hubie's obviously a brilliant singles player, Craig. How does he translate that onto the doubles court? Well, he uh, obviously he's got a very, very good serve, and that helps uh, his partner and clean up whatever uh, the mess around the net. And also, he's good. He's good around the net. He's got a lot of good skills. Um, he's got good instincts for the ball and moving the cut balls off. Um, and he's a closer. And the, the reason why these one of the reasons why these guys are so good is Iga is so solid. And that allows Hubie to roam and create and uh, finish things off the net. What's it like for him to be teammates with the world number one? Does he does he learn from from Iga, both being on the match court and being around her? I think they both kind of uh, they, they both like the energies from each other. Um, I mean, Iga's in a stratosphere of being the best player in the world, but they both get along really well. Um, they're both really really good people, really respectful of each other and they genuinely really enjoy being around each other. Well, it's great to see. It's a great start from them. I'll let you pay attention. OK, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, wonderful insight, isn't it? Yeah, good job. Good job, Kathy. He, he's such an easy guy to talk to, too, isn't he? And uh, good person himself. So, so Hubie has made a good decision. Yeah. Um, Coach Jim Courier years ago. There you go. He must be all right. Then. Well, I've never heard a, a bad word about Craig Boynton, he, and, and he understands tennis. So, so that was a beautiful insight, really. And nice to know that they're good people, isn't it? Yep. So Team Poland in full control in this first set. They lead five love. Just touch on a few things that Craig did mention about Sviantek and her catch. So Iga is the solid, she's solid off the baseline. She looks to set up her catch at the net. And Ruby's looking to roam and create. And, and then they've got that good energy. So yeah. there's a number of factors, isn't it, that goes into play in what makes a formidable team like these two. Well, plus the, the bottom line is they're, they're great tennis players. But Hubert's currently number nine in the world, and of course, no one is ranked higher than Iga Sviantek. So when it really matters most, they'll play well. You can usually guarantee that, and that's why they're so good. So some work to do for Team Spain, looking a little despondent at the moment. Let's see if they can turn things around here in this next game. Well, they need to embrace a little bit of this ACDC energy, Fitzy, Team Spain. <laughs> well, yes, I think they do, and, and they need to take a few more risks. I mean, they can't just um, play conservative tennis here because the poles are too good. They're, they have a lot of weapons. They play well at the right time. The, the Spanish here have to make a start. They have to hold uh, Alejandro serve to start with and then start taking some risks. Certainly help with a few more first serves as well. So Davidovich Fekina looking to get Team Spain on the board here. You know, you know the, the thing that uh, troubles me with some of these uh, doubles matches, not, not just mix, but men's and women's doubles matches, is that everyone automatically has to play up, vir virtually has to play up at the net. And the competence of volleying is not as good as the competence of their ground strokes. So what that means is, if you've got, if you would just watch here, the, the poles will stay back. Two of the best players from the back of the court in the world because they're ranked so high. And they're going against uh, a young lady who doesn't spend a lot of time at the net. 
So the matchup is really poor yeah. for, for, for the Spanish team here. And you've seen Hubert her catch already hit so many balls straight down the line at the net play. So his it's it's loaded in his favour, the matchup. On all the big points, you'd expect him to go there because that's his highest percentage chance of winning. Yeah, he's really exposing Cerebus Tormo at the net. She did well there. She, vol she volleyed well there. I think it's more dangerous when Hubert goes here on the first shot, the first return. So, look, they got into the point, but even when they did that, the, the polls are coming up with the answers. And just like that, Team Poland, four set points to win this first set. And they only need one of them. So in 21 minutes, Team Poland taking the first set. Six games to love. Well, they're not doing too much wrong, are they, Fitzy? Team Poland, they're serving well, they're returning well, and they're solid at the net. They just seem to gel and work together. And what the Sp Spanish have to try and think about here is certainly positive thoughts, but we talked about this the other day. The scoring system in tennis is a strange one. Yeah. It, it is. It's unique. Yes, they've been out of that first set totally. All of the numbers will favour favour uh, the Polish team here, but it's a new start now. So that they, they're still in this match. Oh, anything can happen, and we saw that last night with Team Serbia up against Team China, and how quickly things can change. But it's also changing the tactics, isn't it? So if it's not quite working at the net. We spoke about it last night, maybe playing two back. Yeah. Get themselves yeah. into the rally and then they can start to move forward. Yeah. Only time will tell. Well, they'll, they'll swap ends here, serving now. Uh, her catch will start from, from the opposite end of where he was serving this time. And, uh, of course, then David Isfakina will probably serve from the other end. So, in, in a way, that's good for the Spanish. They, they just need a different scene and a, a different thought process at the start of this match. Need to take some risks and they need to start playing a little better. Well, they've been pretty clear on their game plan, Team Poland. And now some work to do for Team Spain. It all starts with just getting on the board, taking care of their service games, playing the percentage as well. Try and break this momentum that Team Poland has created. Kath, down courtside, are you noticing the energy from Team Spain is just not quite where it needs to be? Yeah, look, they're trying. I can see just now <laughs> Davidovic Fakina there just trying to G both himself and his partner up. Little skip onto the baseline, but... It definitely is fake it till you make it at the moment. They're, they're forcing it. They're trying to make something happen. And we've seen that work over the course of this week so far, particularly in the mixed, where things can just change on a dime. So let's see. It's been a different Spanish team to what we saw in the mixed on the opening day when we were all so impressed by Davidovic Fikina, particularly up at the net. Been a bit disappointing from them so far, but different calibre of opposition, isn't it? Well, it is, Kath, you're absolutely right. And, and sometimes it's just taken out of your hands. You know, you know they, can, they can be as energetic as they want against uh, her catcher's serve, but if, but if he hits three lines in a row, they have no say. So this matchup hasn't worked for them so far. Throwing some caution to the wind. 
But it's okay if he misses his first serve because you might get your racket on the second one. And that's credit to her catch. <laughs> She's been serving so well in this in this mixed doubles thus far. Well, that's a joke. I mean, no one, no one in the world can touch that. So Team Poland continue to take the lead. Six love, one love. <laughs> Davidovic said something there like he cut it out. You know, there was a wry smile. Give me a break. <laughs> From both of them, a wry smile. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, Alejandro's is more of a grimace. <laughs> so, Fitz, if you're the captain of Team Spain, what are oh, you saying you, to your players? You just say, OK, this game is all we think about now. Yep. We need first serves, Alejandro. We need first serves into play. And, Sarah, if you're standing at the net, you have to expect particularly her catch to come at you. Well, let's have a look at what just happened on the change of ends. And <laughs> Davidovich Vikina just giving a little tap on the shoulder to her catch, saying, come on, man. She's got a great smile, hasn't she? <laughs> New balls. Look straight away. And she did well, but her volley becomes neutral. It, it's there's not an there's not a lot on it, and he, he gives him plenty of time for the second one. But the first things first, she has to make the first one, and she did. And they got unlucky there again on the outside of the line. felt that Cerebus Torment had to take that overhead and by not taking it shows she's just not confident right up at the net. Not willing to take those those shots out of the air. Yeah, and, then, and then I guess you start going for a bit more than you you normally would. If you hear errors creep in, this is vital now. <laughs> to me, this is a must-win game for the Spaniards. I think they, he has to take some risk, yeah. though. I mean, unfortunately, it missed by a whisker. And the first point, they were unlucky. The, the her catch backhand just caught the outside of the line. So he's been a bit unlucky. But uh, he has to take some risks. But, gee, for them to have a chance, some of those risks have to come off. And another break of serve. Yeah. It's just going there every time. Virtually. Can't help but really feel for Team Spain. Yeah, and and mentally, yeah. you know, they know that they have two chances here against Fiontek in this set, against her serve, because the odds are, the way Herbert's been serving, they're not going to touch his. as Craig Boynton said. She's so solid, hasn't made a put a foot wrong, and then it allows her catch to use a bit of flair. Good hitting. He created that forced error, didn't he? Vinovich Fikina used the line against her catch. Got the shorter reply, which allowed him to move forward and put the pressure back on Sviantec.
Yeah, he's, he's intimidating. She thinks he's moving, so she feels compelled to hit the lob, but he's about 18 feet six. You know, when he extends that, that arm out, it's hard, so hard to get above him. Always needs to keep that cross-court rally to yeah, allow. I think so. Davidic Fikino just to cross and do something with that ball. Sensational second serve. And she's got the whole package. Yes, she does. Things going far too quickly for Team Spain. 31 minutes of play. Overran it, didn't he? It's called getting there too early. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. He was all over it, though, wasn't he? He's all at sea now, is Alejandro. He's just not sure how they're going to win a game. And the team Poland, six love, three love. Well, one, of, one of my favourite places to visit Fitzy is Margaret River. It's a three hour drive south of Perth. And there is so much to see. You can explore the Cape to Cape walking trail. There's the rugged coastline, Warren Up Forest, and of course the wineries, let's not forget. You like a Cabernet Merlot, don't you? <laughs> That's their specialty at Margaret River. Sounds like you do too. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> Beautiful place, Margaret River. Team Poland not looking to celebrate just yet. They still have some work to do, but boy, have they been a formidable force. 33 minutes of play and they lead six love, three love. Well, they'll be decimated here. And, uh, it's just a bad matchup. And now Sarah has to serve here and she's her service the slowest on the court, so you can bet your bottom dollar it's going to be hard to, to hold it. I think Davidovich Fakina here has to just throw all caution to the wind and cross on virtually all of these returns of serve. Or at least fake, but be seen to be moving. Just haven't seen enough of him do that this afternoon. Unlike his first mixed doubles where he was all over the net, but you touched on it, Fitz, it's been the matchup. That has really hurt Team Spain. Nonetheless, still an opportunity for them to get on the board here.
I noticed in her singles match, Sarah, she had a very high percentage of first serves in, but it's, she doesn't use it as a weapon. And here, it's, it's just a bit underpowered. She's struggling to get any penetration. I mean, it's just like shelling peas, isn't it, for, for Herbie? Just has all the time in the world. Points now for Team Poland. Well, right now, Alejandro is thinking, How can I hold my serve? Because we're probably not going to win this one. That's a shame because there's some talent on this end of the court, but they've just been overpowered. And I've got to say, both of the poles have played really well, but I can't help thinking that the attack down the line, particularly on that first court, has really hurt the, the Spanish team. What a shot. There you go. Gee, they need a couple more. <laughs> Tough to attack that. I mean, that's the second serve at 182, and it's coming from a great height. And uh, the angle is hard to control. And Iga's volleys are just, they have a bit more on them than Sarah's. So she, so she can not only fend that off, but she hit it with a little bit of penetration. And she's made, she's made a lot of them too. So yeah. for Team Spain, it feels like they're playing against a brick wall at the moment. And the viewers shouldn't forget that in the singles, Hubert Hurtcatch lost. Yeah. He lost to Alejandro in the singles. So th this is a different ball game, isn't it? Playing doubles. Yeah. Amazing. Team Poland. Two solid. They lead six love, five love. You know when things just, just seem to go so quickly, Fitzy. You just don't know how to slow down. Yeah. It's, it's just out of your control. It, it feels like it's out of your control. And, and it's a sickening feeling. Yeah. I mean, we're, you can we've all see had it, it unfolding. Yep. We've all had it. And uh, you think, uh oh, I've thrown my best at them. I, 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 I'm now I don't know how to win a game. <laughs> and you can see that on the faces of Team Spain. <laughs> So he has to continue to take a few risks on his serve. Sarah has to be ready. It's coming at her. And uh, she's got to try and step into the volley a little bit and put something on it, like Igas Fiontek's been doing. Bit of a despondent look on their faces for Team Spain. Just haven't been able to get themselves inside this match. Yeah, the, the styles are a bad matchup, aren't they? I mean, the, the, it's hard to know where they can win their points because yeah. there's not enough, not enough first serves. They're not really making their returns, and then there's nothing really quite happening at the net. So it's yeah, he, it's he's hard. He's got to hit some good first serves here. If he doesn't, then their net game is exposed. Yep. So, Davidovic Fikina looking to get Team Spain on the board. She 
lobbed the wrong side. If only they could have produced a point like that early on in the first set. I think maybe it would have been a different tail. Eager lob, she lobbed the wrong way. If she'd gone down the line with that lob, they, they might have won that point. But uh, great overhead from Alejandro. It might give him a bit of spirit here. a little bit of compassion. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see much of it in a tennis sense. Well, fingers crossed at this point. Zaruba's Tormo needs to be ready at the net, needs to be on those toes and expect the ball coming at her. You know, it doesn't matter how hard you hit it, if the, if the direction's not quite right, it won't phase Eager. It'll come back with some interest on it. Just like that. Yeah. And she's good, awfully good. You have to get the ball out of a hitting zone. Maybe jam her up a bit with the in the body. Yep. He probably should stand with it, you know, further or wider on the on the serving serving court. Maybe to create a different angle, something different. He missed one. It's a gift. Spain getting themselves on the board here. So forty three minutes of play, and it's a deciding point, which means. It's an opportunity for Team Spain to get themselves on the board, but also a match point for Team Poland. And it only takes one point to secure the win for Team Poland. Six love, six love in 43 minutes. And with that win, it'll take them through to the quarterfinals here in Perth. <laughs> Team Holland really not doing a whole lot wrong. Disappointing for Team Spain. We really thought they might have had an opportunity. Well, we certainly thought it would be closer than this, didn't yeah. we? And, and, and it's, it's unfortunate for Spain to finish that way because they're better than that. Um, but they, their styles just didn't work against the poles. And right from the start, Hubert was hitting winners down the line and, and they grew in confidence very quickly and the Spaniards lost theirs. They just don't, got overpowered. They sure did. And I think to have a chance in a situation like that, you have to be more accomplished at the net. Um, look, it's fair to say Sarah did struggle a little bit, but it's not her game, you know, she's... She's good in other facets of the game, but not, not so much up there against big hitting opponents who are world class. So Team Poland, happy to get the win. They advance through their group on top, the number one seeds. World class athletes, Iga Sviantek and Hubert Herkacz. Yeah, they'll be relieved, but 
probably uh, impressed with their own mixed doubles prowess as well. Well, just another opportunity to improve, isn't it? They've had two matches, two mixed doubles matches under their belt. Full of confidence, but let's hear what they have to say with Catherine Whitaker. Eager, Hubie, congratulations. That is you and Team Poland qualified for the quarterfinals and in some style. Eager, what is Happy New Year in Polish? Szczęśliwego Nowego Roku dla was wszystkich, a dla nas na pewno to jest dobre rozpoczęcie. You've given a lot of Polish fans in here a very happy new year indeed. Hubie, what's it like playing mixed doubles with the world number one? Well, definitely. I mean, she was she was carrying me throughout the whole match today and uh, she was playing some amazing shots, just just so consistent. Every single game was uh, was making amazing so, uh, shots, so, so it, was, it was a lot of fun. Igor, anything nice to say about Hubie? Well, I'm happy that I have somebody right now uh, to another chef in a bakery. So, no, I'm kidding. I mean, on Twitter it said that bakery should be closed on New Year's Eve, but uh, here we are. So, no, I'm happy that I, I played so well and Kubi is, you know, he's a great partner for mixed doubles and uh, I feel really confident when I'm back and when I'm on the net. So, it's something that I haven't felt usually. So, for sure, I'm feeling the support and I'm feeling, you know, that our games just kind of combine each other. Hubie, you're a chef in the bakery. How does that feel? Uh, well, I mean, I think I was just uh, bringing ingredients and, <laughs> the, you know, uh, I mean, definitely, definitely. It was just uh, it's a lot of fun today. And, uh, yeah, really appreciate you guys uh, coming out and supporting us. Dziękujemy bardzo, że, że przyszliście i szczęśliwego nowego roku. You're into the quarterfinals. Last question for you. This is a very individual sport, tennis. It's not often you get to be in a team environment like this. What would it mean to you to win this competition with the Polish colors on? Oh, everything, honestly. Um, no, it's a great way to start the season with something different than usual. And for sure, we're feeling the support. And the format this year is, I think, more convenient. And um, it's more likely for us to really stay focused and bring, you know, the best quality. So hopefully we're going to show that in the quarterfinals. It's great to see. Congratulations through to the quarterfinals, Igor and Hubie and Team Poland. Well, Hubie, her catch saying that. Eager carried him through that mixed doubles, but I'm not too sure that's quite right, Bitsy. I thought we both thought her catch played exceptionally well in that mixed doubles. He barely missed a ball, didn't he? He was uh, quite modest there himself. But, I mean, obviously, he played well. She did. She barely missed a ball either, in fact. But he was devastating from the first court. I mean, he just he just ripped the whole game apart from the first court. He, he hit winner after winner down the line. He targeted the net player. It was his strength in ground strokes against uh, the opposition's weaker uh, point of reference, the volleys. And it was just a tough matchup all day for the Spaniards. And he was outstanding, so was Eager. They were unbeatable, and, and therein lies the scoreline. They will be a tough team to beat, Team Poland. All the numbers in favour for Team Poland. Fitzy played the percentage as well, served well, returned well, didn't really miss a beat up at the net. It's hard to analyse it is. a match when it's six love, six love like that. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, the unforced errors, maybe have you can read something into that because there were a few volleying unforced errors. but And the backhand win is a, a bit inconsequential, really, in the context. They were, they were just better in every department. They overpowered the Spaniards in that mixed doubles match. They sure did. And maybe something for the Spaniards to learn is to adjust when things aren't going their way. Not to be today for te Team Spain. Let's just have a look at the results from the morning session. And it was Alejandro Davidovich Fakina getting the first win for Team Spain in tough three sets against Herbert Hukac. And then the world number one, Igor Sviantec. Confident and comfortable out on court, winning 6-2, 6-1. And then the mixed doubles all in favour for Team Poland. Six love, six love. So they advance to the quarterfinals here in Perth, Team Poland. And as mentioned, they have come out on top. A formidable team. They made the finals last year at the United Cup. Seated one at this tournament and looking to go one further. As mentioned, they will be a tough team to beat. Let's have a look at tonight. This will be entertaining. Fitzy Taylor Fritz, Team USA, up against Team Australia in Alex Dimonor. And then followed by Jessica Pagula 
up against Isla Tomalovic, and then the mixed doubles, Pagula and Fritz, up against Storm Hunter and Matthew Ebden. That will be one to watch. No doubt there will be a packed crowd in the house here. And it's been a fantastic start to the new year. So many fans out, some fantastic tennis played, world class. And it will continue tonight with Team Australia up against Team USA. Thanks for joining us. And we look forward to your company again soon. Bye for now.